This is another video on Elizabeth Holmes. At this point, she's half of my channel's content. This is probably more than half of my channel's content. But okay, this is another one on Elizabeth Holmes because people love watching her. And for whatever reason, most of my views on my channel are actually Elizabeth Holmes, so whatever. Okay, so this is from the HBO documentary, The Inventor. And I actually picked out all of the clips where she gave these internal speeches because I couldn't find them. There were like these internal seminars or these internal events at Theranos. And there herself and Sunny were basically given like these small talks and I found some of them just really interesting so I just want to go through them. I want to talk for just a minute about what it means to be in this company right now. I was sitting yesterday with the president of Brazil for lunch and this woman had invited. Okay I have to stop very early. So first of all <laughs> she looks she looks weird. She looks like she has throat cancer. Something is up there. Okay, but this is interesting because from her text messages, you kind of realize that she was kind of talking a lot about I'm believing in myself and she's like learning as she goes. It's almost like she's into self-development because the way she was speaking, it was fake it till you make it, believe in yourself, the secret, blah, blah. Everything you people have told me, I didn't have the technology. I didn't have the technology. I didn't have the technology. Resources are never the problem. It's a lack of resourcefulness is why you failed. She seems like she's kind of into that stuff. And now she's on stage and she's telling them a story about how it is to be her. Because I think she's really believing her own hype to a very high degree, but listen to her story. Me and Eric Schmidt from Google and Mark Zuckerberg and the Airbnb guys and the Uber guys and a bunch of other people. And she sits down at the table with all these people and we all have the headphones on. Imagine her having a conversation with Mark Zuckerberg. Imagine like Elizabeth Holmes. This would be so funny. A long form interview between Elizabeth Holmes and Mark Zuckerberg. This would be like gold. Probably the most watched video on YouTube. And translators. And she says, the strategic priority of Brazil is to get access to low cost diagnostics that can facilitate early detection <laughs> and prevention. <laughs> and We're all kind of sitting there and you can see like all the other CEOs faces being like <laughs> now wanting to be the ones in the spotlight. And she kept on doing this for like an hour and a half. And so of course I'm trying to, you know, be humble. Okay, this story. I mean, this is pretty cringe if you think about it. She is telling a story of herself being humble by putting herself above all of the big CEOs on this planet. She's raising herself above everybody in a comparable position as her and like the biggest entrepreneurs of her era. And she is basically saying, oh, I'm trying to be humble because everybody says I'm better and I'm in the spotlight. This is such a weird thing. She's kind of emotionally confused. So she's like emotionally so caught up in this that she doesn't realize that she's telling a story that is really arrogant. She doesn't realize that she's just telling the story. But to me, this is a character flaw. You see very young people being very much distracted by their emotion and then the old people get the less they are she doesn't realize how she looks at this point she doesn't realize that she is trying to be humble is what she's thinking but yet she's being extremely arrogant she doesn't notice so this is a character flaw but um, <laughs> <laughs> all right so comments sunny oh now sunny comes by the way, it's cut this way because I don't have the full footage. I literally just have these clips from the documentary. I don't have the whole thing. So I, I just want to expand a little bit on comment that Elizabeth made. You know, we are a very conservative company uh, because we think if there was Lord of the Rings and there was like the hobbits with the white skin and then you also have the Spanish hobbits <laughs> and you also have the Spanish hobbits, then he would be the perfect Spanish hobbit. If you think about it, if you have like different countries of hobbits and we have the Nordic hobbits and then we have the Southern European hobbits or the North African hobbits, he would be the perfect Southern European hobbit. That you should get things done before you talk about them, right? And that's the culture we have created. So I just want all of you to remember that when we come to work every day, that we carry the sense of... I don't even need to comment on that, but getting things done before you talk about it, this is completely the opposite of what they did. They talked about it, 
didn't get things done but then they tried to sell it even though they didn't have it done so this is yeah completely the wrong way around i mean this is not a lie but it shows what type of a person he is but also she is because they are both manipulating their own customers this is like if you're married or if you have a boyfriend or girlfriend to deceive your own boyfriend or girlfriend for them to think that you're someone you're not which doesn't make any sense because the closer someone is the more they should know about you and if this is your company they should understand what the company is standing for but to also deceive your own employees makes no sense a lot of them knew that the technology wouldn't work but they were trying to keep them in the dark still so that nobody actually saw the whole device everybody just had a component but they could guess so it didn't even work mission in your hearts every single day what we are doing is really really difficult because we're going against an entire system that doesn't believe that prevention is possible no this isn't the issue the issue isn't it that they thought that this wasn't possible if this was the case they would have gotten zero investments but they did get the investment so this wasn't the issue the issue was that they were trying to accomplish something that was impossible if i got a chance to interview anyone who's like a senior person at theranos who has been there since like 2006 then i would love to ask a simple question and that is why did the business model change in 2006 because they had this pitch deck where they showed that they want to go for clinical trials they wanted to support clinical trials to look at drug levels throughout the trial and have a more accurate dosing to have more success in clinical trials more accurate data this was the use case for Theranos this was in the pitch deck this is what they raised I think 50 million for and then they broaden it up I think to attract more investors but I would be interested in from a market perspective and from a product perspective why did they change that because it seemed what they were trying to do was much more reasonable they wanted to have a very strong hardware component where they basically had this use case for making clinical trials more accurate and then having them fare less this was the idea and also have an IT system have very strong software component and mainly a database system where they can measure collect data and have like whatever this audit trail for the whole clinical trial so they had both in their pitch deck but then we don't hear anything about software after that and this whole thing about clinical trials completely out the window so i would like to know why because they completely changed it sunny should have been there he should have known because he was there quite from the beginning elizabeth obviously should have known but the point is not that the industry was against them the point is that they tried to do something that was impossible, even though before that they had a plan that was feasible. It sounded very feasible. Turning every single laboratory test into a small drop of blood or just using a small drop of blood, that isn't feasible. But measuring a specific drug and tracking that for a clinical trial and you're having that as a service, as a value proposition, that's very feasible, that's doable. But what he just said is completely wrong. Last two years, a year and a half, we come under attack you know, from outside and it's usually Quest Diagnostics. Their entire product strategy is lies, built around getting people sick and then living off of their diseases. And we are trying to change that, right? So it's really important. The music, actually I have to applaud the documentary maker. The music is actually pretty perfect because they are like these evil wizards, you know, like these evil people. He's literally lying. He's saying that Quest Diagnostic is all about lies and that they're, they're like the competitor, right? They're an actual company that actually does laboratory tests. So they are like the evil ones and we are the good ones. They are the ones who are the lying ones. This is completely ridiculous. So think about what a weird experience it must have been to actually be there. I just listened to the Peter Atia interview on Joe Rogan and he was talking about actually meeting Elizabeth Holmes and Theranos so he talked about meeting her when it was like 2006 like right in the beginning and then she probably had a normal voice and then he met her again I think based on her story it must have been during the AACC conference this was the video I also put out where she gave a talk and then she had the scientists basically interview her and he apparently met her then and then she already had the deep voice important that you all understand that what we are doing here is so disruptive that we will always be attacked. There are so many people who reach out to us and thank us. There's one guy, he said, you know, thank God for Theranos. I mean, how many times you say that about companies? You buy a product and do you ever say thank God for Uber? Or maybe sometimes, but... <laughs> I would actually like to see the whole talk because it is a documentary. So HBO, they, they obviously picked out the things where they look really bad. So they picked out the things where they look like idiots. Like he says, oh, thank God for Theranos. Obviously, it's an idiotic thing to say because they didn't really have anything good. Who would say that? Maybe an investor because they believe that there's going to be return on investment. But yeah, I would like to see the whole thing. But it's like with the text messages. I don't know where they got this footage from. But 
you will say thank God for Theranos every day. Because every time you need a lab test, every time your family needs a test. The kind of technologies that you're building practically are changing people's lives every single day. Even how she walks, she has a very strange figure, which is completely fine, but I think it's not her figure, I think it's more the clothing she's wearing. But she has like the star, she has the turtleneck, she has the crazy hair, she has like the super white skin, which looks a little whiter than it should be. I cut out the music because it was uh, Can't Touch This, because I didn't want it to be demonetized, but it's probably gonna be demonetized anyway, or copyright claims or whatever. And that was already it. This is a very short video. Maybe I'm finally below 10 minutes, which is my goal for this video. All right, there might be one more on Elizabeth Holmes because I think I have one more prepared and then I might take a break. I have to see how the other videos are doing. I hope you liked the video. Thank you very much.